Hey, it's Miss Wesley. We're in the middle of our probability unit and I thought it would be good to take a pause today and just get ourselves a little bit more familiar with the deck of cards since we're gonna be seeing a lot of card questions in the coming days. Um, so here I have a standard deck. You can see it's Philadelphia Eagles. I've already removed the two jokers from the deck. So how many cards do I have left? I have the 52 cards, the four suits, the black ones are the spades and the clubs and the red ones are the diamonds and the hearts. And today's tutorial is gonna be about one of my favorite card games. It's called King's Corner. My Nana taught it to me. I don't know how many of you have played it before, but I just wanted you to uh, learn, I guess, a new game, see if you like it. And it's a pretty fun one to play, similar to Solitaire. Pretty fun to play against a couple other people too. So today I'm gonna to pretend like I have someone else playing against me. So a couple good shuffles. Let me refocus so you can see the table, and the dealer's gonna deal out seven cards to each player. Five, six, seven. So we got me, we got imaginary, we'll call him Bob. That's who's gonna be playing against me today. We'll get the jokers out of the way. Um, in the middle, this is how King's Corner setup looks. You can just put the deck down right in the middle of the table, and can you just take the top four shuffled cards and make a little T like this going to the outside. So how is that for being able to see it? Let's see, move it a little bit closer. So I've got a red jack, I've got a, a black queen, a black six, and a red four. Just like in the game of solitaire, when you're trying to put um, descending cards going down these, it's the same thing here, but you have to alternate colors. So on this black six, you can put a red five, black four, red three, and so on, just like in solitaire. On this black queen, you can go down the ranks. So next would be a red jack, um, a black 10, red nine, and so on. So let's pretend like it's my turn first. I'm not gonna let Bob go first, even though for good measure, the dealer probably shouldn't go first. I look in my hand, see what I have. You always start your, t oh, and your hand has seven cards. I hope I said that. You always start your turn with selecting a new card. So I'm gonna just show you guys what I have, even though you wouldn't do this if you were really playing. And I just picked a black jack. And now it's my turn. On my turn, let's see what I can do. The object of the game is to get rid of all your cards. Be the first player to have no cards left in your hand. And I can take anything that's out and move it accordingly. So on this black queen, I can put a red jack. And now this slot is open for me to put whatever I want on there. A good move would be, do I have a good move? If I had something where I could move another one of these things, that would be good. Instead, I'm going to put something where I can get rid of two cards. If I have a black seven followed by a red six, I've just, I'm a little bit better off because I've gotten rid of a couple cards. And now there's nothing else I can do. So we're gonna say it's Bob's turn. So here's Bob. He checks out his hand. He always picks a card first, so step one is he picks a new card, and then he sees what he can do. Now I noticed that Bob was dealt a king. Kings, the reason why the game is called King's Corner, is the kings go on the corners. So on any corner, we'll put it here, you can slide a king off diagonally, and then Bob's still going, he can move this black queen with the red jack over and plop it on top of the king. Now you've got a stream of cards going down this way, and he has a free space open to do whatever he wants with. Let me look in his cards. Do you see any card that would be good that would make him get rid of more than one? He could put, oh, what could he put? Um, well, this red five can go on that black six, so that's pretty good. And then I don't know if there's much strategy. I guess if he wants to get rid of two cards, he could get rid of the red queen and the blackjack all in one fell swoop, and then he gets to keep going. Look around, see if he can do anything else. Hopefully he doesn't forget anything. He, he, he can put a three there. It'll be a black three on a red four. And I think that's it for Bob's turn. All right, let's have me take one more turn. Step one, draw a card. I got a red eight. That might come in handy later if I can move something over. I don't see anything I can do with the twos or anything else. Another thing is, we'll let Bob take his turn. If Bob forgets to do something, like forgets to slide a card over and there's an open slot, don't say anything just yet because you can do that on your turn. So he picks a card, he got a red two. So he can use that red two here on the black three. And then I think that's it for his turn. He'll tell me to go. I'm gonna take a couple more turns. Uh, red two doesn't really help me too much now. I think I've got nothing. And for Bob, Black five. Black five is okay. Actually, that's a great card for him. He can put the black five on top of the red six. 
And then let's say he forgets to look around and see if he can do anything else when really you can move this red four on top of that black five. So he'll tell me to go and I'll say, aha, Bob, but you forgot something. So now I get to do it. I'm gonna slide this red four on top of the black five, making this a little bit longer and giving me an option for what I wanna do. And this is a good opportunity. I have a red eight and I notice if I put that down, I get to slide this whole pile starting with the black seven over. We'll slide this on top of that, leaving me an empty slot. Any more kings come up, I just get to put them diagonally down the corners. I have an open space with which I can do whatever I want. And I'm trying to see if there's a way for me to get rid of more than one card. I guess I could go um, two ace. Oh yeah, I could. Black two and then red ace, which counts as a one like that. This is kind of a jerk move to the other player because it doesn't leave any room for them to build off of. Ace is the lowest you can get to, but you know what? Sometimes that happens. I look around to see if there's anything else I can do and I don't think there's anything else. Let me go one more turn for each player. So Bob gets a turn, he picks a card. He gets a black 10, so the black 10 can go on the red jack. He's still waiting for a red nine because a red nine would let him get rid of all the rest of these cards. But I think for now he's good. So Bob tells me to go. I think that black 10 was really good for me because I do have a red nine. So I'll go, I pick up a red seven. I'll put down my red nine, not really knowing what Bob has. I think I've found everything. So I'll tell him to go. And then this is his lucky day. He picks a card. He got a red seven. Um, he's gonna put down eight, seven, oh, eight, seven. And I thought I could get rid of all of them, can I? Well, maybe he wins the game because look, red seven, uh, black six is the lowest card here. We'll put this on top of that and oh my goodness, Bob gets kind of lucky. Looks like he won the game because he gets rid of all of his cards. All right, have a good day. Hope you enjoyed.